Okay, yet again unto the breach, turn 18. Uh, the war against Celeria has been launched, and we took Troya with no casualties. We took Lor uh, Lorborough with two casualties, because he did have a Celerian cultist and a little bit of province defense here, and Machaka warriors are really just garbage. They're such garbage, it's amazing. But we stormed in, the spiders rushed around, did their spidery job, and we killed everyone very, very quickly. Excellent. Lost two guys to arrow fire, because they refused to wear armor. Uh, the People's Deathmatch is scheduled in the arena, so spellcasting is not allowed. All participants will get a slave collar to ensure they do not perform magic or run away. Now, uh, the slave collar effectively feeble minds you, so not only does it prevent you from casting uh, spells, it also lowers your magic resistance. However, being feeble minded does not actually prevent you from casting holy spells, funnily enough. So if you send your Prophet, the Prophet can still spam your Smite spell, which in my case is, uh, this holy word, Heavenly Fire. Now, Heavenly Fire does 10 armor negating damage. It is negated by magic resistance, but then it also does another 10 armor negating fire damage. Um, so, to be honest, the People's Arena like this is actually a great place to send your Prophet. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to send Peter Parker into the Arena for a couple of reasons. First of all, he'd probably end up fighting a giant... Actually, Ashdod's almost dead, isn't he? Aren't they? Last I knew, Ashdod's capital was being besieged, so... Hmm. I'm sort of tempted to send Peter Parker. Because this game is using better arena. Eh, the random artifact, not super worth it, really. And he would, if I get attacked by a bunch of undead, I would like to have Peter Parker around. Because uh, Moita's going to need to be casting Blessing here and then dropping Ashes to Ashes. But in any case, we're moving over here to besiege Thing Woods to prevent him from recruiting a whole bunch more ghouls and stuff. We're collapsing our armies down into this province. So we're going to be gathering up, you know, about 60 more units here. And then we'll also launch them over here, or possibly we'll come down to besiege Mammoth Grove. That is definitely his main army, and it is swelling rapidly. He's pumping out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of long dead. Now, Peter Parker can alone destroy, like, probably a hundred long dead over the course of a long battle. But you just have to make sure the battle actually is long. So we're gathering up troops. We're moving in that direction. Um, especially we're gathering up pygmies, and recruiting pygmies here, and Machaka Hoplites and all that, because... The Flaming Arrows will be coming out very, very shortly. Uh, two turns, we'll have Flaming Arrows active, and we will have Kinchikatile, the one mage who can cast Flaming Arrows at the moment. So, what I'm thinking is, Solaria, if I was in Solaria's position right now, I would take this whole stack and I would move it up here. And I would, I would collapse pretty much everybody down on Mammoth Grove in a bid to catch these armies attempting to concentrate on Mammoth Grove, because if they were attempting to concentrate on Mammoth Grove, then I think probably 300 some odd undead could beat them, because right now, they don't have hardly any archer support, they only have a few of the Black Hunters, and Spider Knights. Um, they've got a whole bunch of garbage chaff who will die pretty easily to skeletons, and uh, they do have swarm support. He, he'll have seen that I have these gems, so he has to be worried about flaming arrows or swarm or both. I mean, the purpose of, of giving them all these gems right now is to make him think that I can cast both and make him worry. And so, um, obviously I can't cast both yet, but I will be able to shortly. Um, hmm. Other than that, I mean, over here, just sight searching, things are still peaceful. Um, I didn't particularly find anything this turn. I did get Turmoil and Unrest in Loreboro, which I just conquered, and some Unrest there, but I got some Fire Gems in Solam, so my Fire Gem stockpile is actually very, very healthy, which is good. Um, yeah, I think this is what I'm going to do. We're going to collapse troops up here, we're going to hit Thing Woods just in order to stop them from reanimating, um, and like I said, I'd like to hit Mammoth Grove in order to stop them from reanimating, but I don't think I have the forces. What I will do, however, is concentrate these armies, and then I'll consider whether I want to hit Mammoth Grove, because with the... Pick me support that might be able to snipe out mages if I tell them to fire rear. Um, I could potentially hold down Mammoth Grove 
And, of course, ghouls are very good fort defenders, but skeletons are not. So he's churned out a whole bunch of long dead here. Long dead are very bad at defending forts. They give you 0.1 siege strength each. Uh, whereas ghouls give you 0.5 like normal humans. So over here, actually, this army probably won't be able to damage the walls because I did not manage to get helmet sappers. Calum outbid me, the bastards. But once I get this army over there, as well as this force, that'll be another 90 plus siege strength. So that should let me crack the fortress in about three turns if I were to stay on it. I won't be staying on it. I'll be rampaging around trying to cause more damage because that's how you win wars. I don't want to get locked down trying to fight a fortress where he can concentrate all of his skeletons on me until it is useful for me to do that. So, whole bunch of pygmies, pygmies and spears, uh, machaka hoplites over here, spider warriors and a few pygmies. And I'm not recruiting any troops over here, I don't believe not, just a sorcerer and two scouts up here. And those scouts are sneaking off to give me a better look at the world. So, that is turn 18. I think we're in pretty good shape. We'll see how this war against Solaria goes. I'm not entirely confident. I don't know how many skeletons he has there. Actually, it looks like he doesn't... Yeah, I guess I don't see this province for some reason. I see both of those because I have an army next to them, but I don't see that one because my scout can't, isn't there. Okay, fair enough. Um, and I've got two scouts here that are going to be sneaking down into Solarian territory as well. And Manani uh, might... Uh, no, I'll just send him out to sneak. Sneak. Sneaky, sneaky spiders. Okay, so that's it. I'll see y'all in turn 19. All right, yet again onto the breach, turn 19. So we have besieged Thing Woods. We don't actually have the siege strength here to hurt the fort, and the enemy has moved up a big old pile of undead right here. So what we're doing is we're falling back and grouping up troops in Troya. Uh, in fact, I think I might send forward some more troops because this could potentially be the climactic battle of the age um it's kind of it, it's kind of not great that i've gotten caught here but i mean i did this to myself it's not that bad so here's the situation we're gathering our troops here he's got a big old pile of basically undead there's 340 units mainly long dead and ghouls he's also got, got some of his various gladiators which are pretty good units and some salarian cultists but mainly this is just going to be an army that walks a ton of undead at me and tries to kill me now, as I said, I have a really good banishment spell, and I've got several priests here. So I've got Peter Parker, who will throw ashes to ashes at uh, area of effect 8 for uh, 10 armor negating damage against undead units, and also set them on fire. And then I've got Muita and Sami, who will throw the same spell at lesser effect, but still fairly effective. So all my actual troops have to do is basically like hold the undead still for a relatively short period of time, and they'll burn to death. I also, of course, have a couple of guys throwing Swarm, which will help with the chaffing situation and sort of sort of muck the undead up. I don't have any troops that will actually, like, hurt them. It'll be entirely banishment that actually does damage. But I should be able to still get away, even if he does manage to, like, charge in and kill me. And my Black Hunters should do work here. The Repel won't do anything because Repel does not uh, affect Undead. They just take one damage and launch their attack anyway. But Black Hunters have very high protection and Long Dead don't do much damage, so taking hits won't hurt them all that much. They will still die from repeated hits. Uh, and the web will help block up the attacks, as it were, because the Undead attacking them will get webbed and they'll be able to accomplish something. I also have them set to hold and attack rear. Both groups are on opposite sides doing that. Hold and attack rear, hold and attack rear. And so... The goal there is that they will actually rush around the back and kill the Salarian cultists that have come with the Long Dead. Because, of course, he needs undead leadership in order to uh, actually, well, you know, lead his Long Dead. If he doesn't have undead leadership, his troops will simply crumble. So if you look at Salarian cultists, they have 25 undead leadership, so they can lead some troops. Have to be a lot of them. Thaumaturgs have 60 undead leadership, so there could be a few Thaumaturgs leading that army, but probably it's cultists. And then Grand Thaumaturgs have a whole bunch of undead leadership, and Censors have a whole bunch of undead leadership. But in any case, uh, actually, while we're there, I should also point out the other part of his army, which are the Retariuses, or Retari AT, and, and the Gladiators. Retariuses have nets much that have a web effect, much like mine, um, can be negated by large or strong beings, so the nets just don't work on my Black Hunters, and they also don't work on my Spider Knights. And of course, strength also has a chance to negate, although you have to be very, very strong in order to successfully negate a net. 
Uh, and then they also have gladiators. Gladiators have a high damage, high accuracy, double attack flail. So they, they hit very hard. Um, these guys are actually very good at dealing with units like my spider knights. Uh, black hunters will still mulch through them because of the web and because of the repel. But uh, the spider knights, I think, would probably get killed by gladiators in roughly equivalent uh, gold cost. Also, Gladiators, fun fact, only cost one resource, despite having a whole bunch of prot. And that's because, basically, they've been, the, the theory is they've been levied from the arena, they were already there, and they're just, uh, they only fight for one battle until they've been wounded or hit someone in battle, and then they disappear. So, in actual wars against other players, they have a horribly high attrition rate, but for expansion, they're fantastic, which is probably why he still has a bunch of them. Um, it looks like he's still recruiting a whole bunch of Retariuses, which... Uh, strategically, I don't think is a great decision at this point, but eh, it'll help. I'm casting Blight. I'm casting Blight twice, actually. M Mabuba is also casting Blight. So I'm hitting both of these places with Blight. That will cause unrest, cost him 80 gold a pop, and kill 5% of the population, which will uh, lower his income permanently. So I am spending 10 Earth Gems doing that, but I think it's worthwhile right at the moment. Uh, I have an excess of both Earth and Death Gems currently, and I don't have any construction research to take advantage of them. Next turn I'll hit Enchantment 4. That will give me Flaming Arrows, and I'll also have a bunch of uh, Pygmies built up here. All those, plus some of these ones that I'm recruiting, and a few infantry, just kind of like a few infantry to hold the line temporarily while the Pygmies go to work. I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm gonna kill one of those guys. Uh, I can only recruit four more for the money. Yeah, never mind. Uh, shoot. Yeah, come on, get, get back on the front. There we go. There we go. All right, great. So yeah, whole bunch of pygmies, a few infantry, couple spiders, and they will uh, help uh, Kinjikatile, the man whose name I just love. I love that name. It's so great. We'll be able to cast Flaming Arrows right off the bat. After that, we're going down Conjuration real quick to get to where I can summon Elementals, because Fire Elementals are the other great counter to skeletons, and it will give me dark knowledge so I can start remote site searching for death with my sorceresses. And that would be great because I don't have great death site searching, and I have a, a deep a deep and a uh, unstoppable lust for death gems. Over here we've got some spiders, we're gonna just put in the... actually, you know what, I might as well just put all the spiders on one lady. There you go, have some spiders. Still recruiting troops, um, we're actually swapping to recruit spider knights because random event uh, this was Thing Woods that I took. Random event, I was attacked in Solam by a whole bunch of Earth, by some Earth Elementals because of the Throne of Gaia being claimed. And they wiped out my province defense because my province defense is shit. Uh, other events this turn. There was the Arena Battle, the People's Death Match. So let's watch that real quick. Vanarus sent a an injured horse tribe chief against a child of Oni from Shinoyama who has unequaled obesity and so lots of hit points also has the Aegis. So this is the guy who won the arena last time. So he's got the Aegis, which is uh, a very powerful shield, actually, and you have to make an, an MR check anytime you attack them, the, the bearer, or be turned to stone. So, uh, you know, it's a very powerful shield, but it is still just a shield. Pretty, uh, pretty low-quality artifact there. This Horse Tribe Chief is just shooting arrows, which are not doing much against Prot 17, Defense 19, with a shield. So now they're going to trade Missile Fire for a while, because he has Poison Spit. In any case, I think I think you could take it as read that, uh, yeah, the Child of Oni won. Then a Shambler Chief was beaten by a Facian Locos. This is part of their special yearly event that spawns Gigantes. So interesting, he risked that guy in the arena. Locos also killed a Nazcan Apu, who is just a random flying commander that Nazca sent. Storm General was killed by an Issian commander. That must have been their prophet, I guess. Yes, yeah, so that's just a, a standard Storm General. Oh no, this is a, a standard commander. Wow. What happened here? Just luck, I guess, because Prop 13, Defense Skill 16, Attack 12. He's very much superior to this commander, but it just came down to dice rolls, I guess. Commander took the first couple hits and got weakened. The feeble-minded is from the slave collar they're all they're all wearing because this is the people's arena. Um, it makes your magic resistance garbage. So, honestly, the Aegis is even more powerful in this context than it would normally be. 
because it's a it's a roll against uh, magic resistance, of course. So yeah, the Kayla might just lost due to RNG. Uh, and then the Locos killed the Isian commander, and then finally, finally, what happened? We've got the the Child of Oni with the Aegis. We've got the Locos with uh, oh wearing black steel plate. So he's got quite a powerful attack and high prop, but once again, magic resistance 9 because he's feeble-minded from the Slave Collar. So... Yeah, he rushed in and just got petrified. Wow, that is super rough. That did make him pierce and slash resistant. Does he ever get a chance to... to resist that? Nope. If he, he just dies in a certain number of rounds. Okay, well, fair enough. So yeah. So the Child of Oni won, and he got the Immaculate Shield, which I think must have replaced the Aegis, probably. The Immaculate Shield is a shield is actually a better artifact, to be honest. But once again, it's just an artifact shield, so nobody really cares. We were also attacked by Earth Elementals in Machaka, but I have so much province defense here in Machaka that they were just overwhelmed by numbers. <clears throat> My Machaka hoplites and stuff did the job, I guess. Yeah, well, the one thing you can say about uh, Machakan province defense is that one point on a fort does get you a lot of militia. See how much militia that gets me? Quite a bit. In any case, this turn, moving some people around to site search. Uh, these guys should go somewhere else. Like Hassan can go there, Adnan can go down there. And yeah, we're going to keep site searching. We're building up troops to attack, continue the attack on Solaria. We're going to get our troops here. We're going to join up with King Jikatile and all of his troops, and then we're going to move back in. We are leaving one, count them, one caveman to try and maintain the Siege of Thing Woods for just an extra turn, just to cut down on the number of, uh, the amount of skeletons he's able to amass. We'll gather up our army, go back into Thing Woods, or possibly down into Mammoth Grove. If he moves this whole army up here and gets them wiped out by the Banishes, I might be able to come down and besiege Mammoth Grove and stop it from recruiting any units, which would be sort of hilarious. Also over here, we have a throne that's guarded by primarily forest trolls with a troll safe Ben Berender, uh, a troll witch, uh, leading the army. So that's interesting. I wonder what throne that is. I have no idea. It could be the throne of beasts. Or potentially the throne of ice. Other than that, I don't know. Huh, interesting. In any case... That's the turn, and I'll see you all in turn 20. Okay, folks, yet again under the breach, turn 20. We've hit enchantment level 4. Excellent, so we now have flaming arrows. We've cast blight twice, so we hit both of his uh, forts with blight. Uh, we found a burial mound in Troya, so uh, we found a, a death gem, although it's in this province that we're fighting with Solaria over, unfortunately. Battles in Lorborough. Uh, Solaria moved a whole bunch of, basically, zombies, but with a... A small group of Retarius backing them up. Wiped out my province defense, lost a few long dead, nobody really cares. And in Thing Woods, they uh, did beat my caveman that was besieging the place, so unfortunate there. In the halls, we got a fertility festival, we got unrest in Centania, and we got one fire gem in Kaz Dupar. Uh, and the forces awakened by the throne of Gaia are slumbering once more. Independence attacked a couple of other places. Didn't win either place, but they did do some damage to this Nazcan army, including killing four condors, which is kind of hilarious. We've built our fortress, Solom is still under siege, and Pythium has been permanently vanquished by Nazca, so Pythium is officially gone. This fort over here is still under siege by Earth Elementals. We're moving out some Spider Knights and such to go beat him up with Cascater. Actually, he doesn't need all those troops, he doesn't need those guys, so he'll just take these guys and go up there. Free up the fort. Uh, in the meantime, it's okay, because our income is already being profitably spent. Still recruiting sorceresses, but no troops over here. Pumping out troops. And over here, we are pumping out priests and pygmies. Down on this side, we've got our more pygmies moving up. We're assembling our forces in Loreboro, where we can join them up together. Um, and they have plenty of gems for a sustained campaign. So we're going to have... It's a lot of pygmies, actually. It's already... This is the, the strength of pygmies, that you can mass them so quickly. We've got 66, uh, these guys need to be on hold and attack, like back over there. So what was it, 66, another 100, about 150, 140, something like that. I have in Troya alone, I already have uh, 40 of them. 
plus the various chaff and infantry and, and uh, spiders and all that. And then I've got a little more infantry, plus mainly just masses and masses of pygmies coming. And we'll have these undisciplined spiders up in the front as well. So we've got Sudi who will be casting Swarm. We've got King Jikatile who will cast Flaming Arrows and then other spells. He's on conservative magic gem usage, so he shouldn't burn through all of his fire gems too quickly, which is good. Um, and actually, actually, I'll tell you what, I should be able to script him. I don't have any Conjuration yet, so I can't script him to cast um, uh, Earth Power and like uh, any of the higher level Earth spells, but I can script him to cast... Um, mm -hmm. Just to make sure he doesn't burn gems, I can script him to cast Fire Shield and Temper Flesh. Or Earth Meld. Actually, I should just script him to cast Earth Meld. That would be the thing to do. Um, so I'll just script him to spam Earth Meld after he gets the uh, the arrows out, the flaming arrows. Okay, so army assembling down here, pretty substantial force. Actually, this should be able to beat a a very large skeleton army. So I'm hoping. What I'm honestly hoping is I'm honestly hoping he takes these units and moves them up here to intercept me and and have the the field battle that I'm. I'm looking for, because I'm looking for a field battle right now. I don't actually want to have to go and f try to fight through all of his uh, forts, because he's got, like, like this fort has 90, approximately 90 siege defense in it. This fort has, like, 180 or 170 province defense in it. You know, fort siege defense, that is. Um, my armies have a little less than 200 siege attack all told. So, you know, it's going to be kind of a problem to bust through those forts if I have to. Pygmies do not contribute much uh, siege strength. So I need more siege strength in order to do this, but I also need a bunch of pygmies because Flaming Arrows is a great counter to Long Dead. It's just, and it's hard to stop is the other part of it. Um, I also need mages, but Eyes of the Lord are important. Um... What I'd like would be kind of to have a, a, a temple down here so I could be pumping them out from this fort. Because currently I'm not recruiting anything from it. I'm getting pretty sharply in, income limited right now. So I'm going to actually cancel the sorceress over there. And recruit a sorcerer over here. And then... Um, I guess I'm also going to start pumping out cavemen because I need cavemen for siege strength. Because for 20 gold, cavemen give me 2.9 siege strength, whereas Machakan Hoplites give me 1 for 14. Um, Militia Hoplites give me 1 for 7, which would be 21 gold for 3. That's pretty comparable, but cavemen, I think, are still better because they're more survivable. So I can get, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I could be recruiting, let's call it 5, and then spend the rest on pygmies here. So I'll still have some pygmy recruitment. Plus, I'll have sorcerers coming out here, which will help. Um, witch doctors won't help quite so much, but sorcerers could be handy. Uh, the other research thing that I can do is I can spam dust to dust, which is very effective at destroying uh, long dead, because it doesn't even have a check. It's just 22 armor negating damage. It kills long dead uh, every time it hits. It destroys a square of long dead. So what I could do is I could spam out witch doctors in order to just spam dust for dust. I mean, that's potentially possible. Um, I'm not sure it's super efficient. You need a lot of Witch Doctors in order to reliably kill a whole bunch of Long Dead with Dust to Dust. Um, I think Sorcerer's Casting Swarm and helping with my research would be better. My research is pretty solid. 290 on turn 20. That's good. Uh, my research is solid. I just want Conjuration 3 as quick as I can. And then after that... As you go down Thaumaturgy, you can get uh, at higher levels Wither Bones, which is death 3, but is uh, area of effect 6 plus. So it wipes out tons and tons and tons of undead. This is like the bane of Skell Spam. It just destroys it. No contest, no trouble. Um, but right now, I'm not too... Yeah, I'm honestly not too concerned. Right now, I, as long if I get my field battle, I will crush hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of undead. Um, I just have to make sure that I have enough troops in the front line that they don't completely overwhelm me before I get the, the firing line active and the uh, the banishes start raining down. But if he fights me here, I'll have four level one priests plus Peter Parker dropping ashes to ashes. 
and I'll have the flaming arrows, and I'll have my infantry will take a beating. Like, don't get me wrong, the infantry will get savaged, but I think I'll win. I think I can probably clean out three, four hundred undead with this army. And in fact, I could also clean out the uh, the Retariuses, because Retariuses don't have shields or high prot, so flaming arrows uh, destroy them pretty well. Prot 12, no shield, hits from flaming arrows, 8 AP damage versus 12 prot, goes through pretty easily, because it's effectively 8 versus 6, so they do damage. They won't kill instantly, but they do damage, and they set them on fire. Now, Solaria does have a Cold Dominion, which is an interesting choice. Or, actually, he may have Neutral Temp. No, I think he has, like, Cold 1, because it's Fall. So, Fall creates Cold. Um, I, of course, have a Heat Dominion, so I'm still Heat 3, even in late Fall. Um, but I think he might have... Yeah, he probably has a point of cold. He probably has cold one. Yeah, I think so, because he's reliably cold one across most of his dominions. So I think he has cold one. Um, in this province, this province is not cold because it has my dominion, so that won't uh, inhibit the effectiveness of the flaming arrows. But these provinces, actually, flaming arrows would be slightly inhibited. And down here, I think the uh, the fires that it set, sets will go out more quickly. That, incidentally, is cold three, which makes me think that's the throne of... Ah, uh, the Throne of Winter isn't on the map, so never mind. I was thinking that might be the Throne of Winter. It might have a... It might have a cold generating site in it, though, so I'll keep that in mind. In any case, that's the plan for this turn. Other than that, we've got a couple mages moving around site searching and such. Uh, next turn, we'll go over here and break Solam free, get some of the income back. Pandu is moving over here to site search for level 2 death. And we've got more priests rolling down to help against Solaria. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in turn 21. Okay, turn 21. We've hit Conjuration level 2 to Conjuration level 3 will come, I think, next turn. Didn't find any magic sites. There was a battle in Lorborough. We got our full army together against only a fraction of his army. So we've got about 100 pygmies back here. Good grip of chaff up front with our two squadrons of black hunters on the flanks. Some commanders in the rear, including Kinjikatile the Black Sorcerer, ready to cast Flaming Arrows. Over on the other side, we've got about, this is like, what, 80 or 90 skeletons. Uh... 20-some-odd Retariuses, Retarii, uh, a Centurion, a Mound King that he's summoned to provide undead leadership, which is interesting. I would have thought he'd just be using Solarian Cultists or something. Some long-dead Principe and a Commander back there. So nothing too terribly impressive on either side. He starts coming in and the Flaming Arrows start going out, mowing down the Skeletons. <clears throat> very, very good. Um, we do get quite a bit of friendly fire with the Flaming Arrows, that is kind of inevitable, that just happens. But we wipe out the enemy army very, very well. Um, you can see here, <coughs> excuse me, the Swarm has summoned many, 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 many bugs. We didn't actually need to summon that many bugs, but in any case, we lost two of our Black Hunters, turned them into Hunter Spiders. Only, we lost no Machaka Hoplites. Machaka Hoplites are quite resilient against all the stuff that's being thrown around because of that 17 prot and the shield, so even if a flaming arrow hits them, it's 8 AP. The hide shield plus the prot is 28, so that's still effectively 14 versus 8 damage, so they're pretty good. Um, Machaka Warriors, however, got get butchered. Uh, we lost one of our 153 pygmies, getting 72 kills, and yeah, like I said, it was about 70 undead, so we killed all of the undead, wiped everything out, and killed their Mound King, so that's a summon that's dead, which is nice, and there it was only 14, yeah, 14 gladiators, 26 Retarii, killed them all, excellent. If we look up here, we took 22 casualties, and actually, um, it looks like the uh, we did not get hardly any friendly fire, because we had 11, 21. That's weird, actually. The, the kill rankings they have here are odd, because they list more kills than we had losses, and they don't actually have anything that can cause friendly fire to themselves. Like, gladiators don't have ranged damage. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe it's counting the ones that got off the field and then retired as kills? That's weird. In any case, we wiped them out with relatively low casualties. Um, like I said, we lost some of our Machaka Warriors, but that's really the only part of our army that took any significant damage, and I don't care about Machaka Warriors. Uh, we got, uh, we have a monster boar in the hulls, which is unfortunate. We are gonna have to deal with that. Um, and that's actually gonna be kind of a bitch to deal with, but we'll we'll work on it. So, what we're doing here is we're pumping out um, Pygmies, and now we're starting to cast Terracotta Soldiers. Terracotta Soldiers are highly fire-resistant. Um, they're not very good troops, but 
they're highly fire resistant and they have some natural protection so they can fight skeletons fairly well um, that means they're perfect for standing in front of pygmies and having flaming arrows volleyed past them and uh, not dying so we're doing that over here we're not recruiting any troops up here we're just pumping out more uh, priests actually and no pygmies all our pygmy recruitment is going on right there over here we're recruiting witch doctor and up here are we recruiting we're recruiting a full-fledged sorcerer because i want my sorcerers to start churning out those terracotta soldiers so i need earth randoms um honestly terracotta soldiers is something that uh sorceresses can do very effectively but then i would have to lead them forward they require magic leadership if i recall correctly and so i'd have to devote mages from here to lead them forward whereas over here i can be pumping out sorcerers who have some magic leadership uh, even witch doctors actually have some and so then they can take the troops forward and also add strength to the armies while my research core of sorceresses stays back here researching. Next turn, as I said, we'll hit Conjuration level 3, and we'll start spending our death gems profligately, spamming dark knowledge on everything in order to get more death income, because our death income is okay. Our gem income is okay for this point in the game, but it's not fantastic. 11, 15, 18, it could definitely be better. And I think as soon as I start spamming out dark knowledge, I should get a couple hits, because I know there are some high-level death sites um, that aren't found by level 1 and level 2 site searching. So, these sorcerers actually should move towards the front line. They'll pause over here to pick up these spiders and such, and move forward with them. Uh, we're collapsing our troops together into Troya in an effort to hit this army. I'm hoping, actually, that he moves these troops up there and we have a, a great big uh, clash of the titans, because I think, basically, the more skeletons he has on the field, the more effective my pygmies are with the flaming arrows. So I think if he does that, we should be able to just spam a crap ton of flaming arrows at him because he doesn't have any flexibility right now. This tactic pretty well counters what he's been doing, which is spamming long dead and shieldless gladiators. And as long as he keeps doing that and doesn't have any real good answers to it in the form of high level magic, I think we'll be all right. He does have some thaumaturgs that he's been recruiting down here. So he's got some actual mages, but not many, I don't think. Uh, which also should mean that his research is pretty low. Like, he may well not be matching me in research right now, which would be just fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Got to get rid of this cough. Um, I'm heading up to Alteration Level 5. That will give me Wooden Warriors, which actually I don't want to use in this context because I'm spamming fire damage. But it will also give me Iron Warriors and Mother Oak. Iron Warriors, very, very good to drop on my spiders. Mother Oak potentially gets me more nature gems, which would be nice. I have actually quite a few nature gems built up. So once I hit Alt-5, I can run down to construction level 4, build a Thistle Mace. Um, I may, and I may be able to actually cast it. I need to get a nature 3 random. Ah, he's going to need to boost twice, so I might have to empower somebody. I might have to get a nature 3, empower him, then give him a Thistle Mace. Nah, that will require me to build up a lot more nature gems, so I probably can't do it soon probably can't do it anytime soon but i live in hope um a lot of pygmies coming out of here you can just you can just really crap out pygmies fast if you're interested in doing that we're going to send lumumba down here as well just to kind of sneak along he's going to take with him we are about to hit conjuration level three so he's going to take with him another 12 fire gems or so we're burning through our fire gem stocks rapidly in this war but that's okay and we've got a whole bunch of fire gems already deployed that aren't actually being used right at the moment. As soon as we hit Conjuration level 3, we'll start spitting out those lesser fire elementals, and that will be very, very effective. Um, in fact, we might want to run all the way down to level 5 to summon full-size fire elementals. That's a thought. Um, that would take another 1,100 research points, so another, like, 4 turns, maybe 5 turns. Probably more like 4 turns, because my research will be growing. Hmm. Because Alteration Level 5 won't be very directly useful. Uh, enchantment Level 5 for Flame Ward could be sort of hilarious, just to make sure I don't accidentally murder my own people. Or, um, I can't cast Foul Vapors. Plus it won't be useful against Skeletons. It will kill the Commanders, unless they're using Mound Kings. But we already know he's using Mound Kings, so... Eh. Evocation. I could go down Evocation to get Blade Wind for my Black Sorcerers and Falling Fires. Shadow Blast, once again, doesn't work on the undead, but Falling Fires works a treat on the undead, and so does Blade Wind. Blade Wind mows down Long Dead with a quickness. However, I, I haven't been recruiting Black Sorcerers. I've been pumping out Sorceresses. 
for research, and they can't do those things. So I need some more black sorcerers, but that means that I need money, which currently I don't have because my income is only 1400 and my upkeep is really high. My upkeep is already almost half of my income, which is kind of a bad place to be. But we will uh, we'll storm in. We'll, we'll keep fighting Solaria here. He's got, like I said, he's throwing down forts like mad. He's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven forts that I can see. I think he might have more. Uh, and of course, every single one is going to pump out Solarian cultists and then pump out skeletons. So that will be a bummer. And like I said, I don't really have enough siege strength to do a whole lot about it right now. Um, I could potentially go down here to Vissian Forest and try to break this palisade and capture it. But doing that would expose me to being... Well... See, this it's another forty. Uh, it's another forty pygmies, and forty pygmies is probably like thirty dead, long dead in any given battle. Twenty or thirty. So, yeah, I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. Here's here's what I might do. I think I'm gonna, think I'm gonna cut out the alteration, just run down to conjuration level five, and instead of fire gems, I've already got a bunch of fire gems. Let's take like six fire gems, and then a whole bunch more nature gems. So I can spam out Swarm more to slow people down. Alright, that'll be the plan. We'll move down here into Troya. Um, link up with the army. And engage. And like I said, I think if he moves this army up here to meet me. Like, because he's got this army and then he's got this army, which is another probably 200 units. Um, but a lot of them are ghouls that he's actually going to keep in the fort. So if he pushes those troops up, he has some troops over in Thing Woods he could push up. He could probably muster five or 600 undead. 500 undead might actually be too many. Um, I've got my, my Black Hunters scripted to fight in the front lines now instead of trying to go around the rear because eh, they just kind of got in the way, to be honest. But I think my lines can hold pretty well against skeletons, and then I can spam out... If I can spam out the arrows, especially with those extra 40, I think I can probably kill... I think I can I can kill 300 skeletons, no problem. 500? Eh, 500 might be too many, but we'll see. We will just have to see. So, I need to script these guys to... Yeah, they're on hold and fire, hold and fire. We've also got these cavemen in the back. I'm um, bringing them mostly for siege strength, just in case, but... Eh. They can help club some skeletons if they get to that point. And that's a burial mound that I would like to take away from Solaria. So yeah, we're going to engage in Troya and uh, see what we can do. So, thanks for watching. See you in turn 22.